Hello everyone, Richard Walding here. I'm just going to have a look at a short experiment um, I've called soda water and pressure, but really it's about uh, working out the concentration of um, carbon dioxide based on the pressure of the headspace. So um, that's what I'm calling it. It's the headspace of a soft drink. Now what I mean by headspace, oh before I go on, um, you'll find the notes that go with this video at that website there, that's the address. Um, you can see it, uh, my, my EEI is my Extended Experimental Investigations. So um, we'll move on. Now when I talk about headspace, I'm talking about the air space above the surface of a liquid. Now this is using natural, sparkling natural mineral water. Um, for the experiment, I'm actually using soda water. The only difference is and natural mineral water has a few minerals in it which will affect the um, acidity. Um, so if you measure if you're just trying to measure the carbon dioxide, um, it's difficult uh, if you're using mineral water. So just stick to soda water. Okay, in that headspace, uh, it's mostly carbon dioxide. There will be a little bit of uh, water vapor, uh, but not much. And for this um, demonstration, I'm going to assume it's all carbon dioxide. Here's a little video I made. Now, what's happening in this is I'm going to weigh a bottle of soda water with the lid on. That's just an ordinary bottle, and you can see it's coming to 498.41. I open the top, let the gas out. Now, you mightn't be able to hear the gas, but it's bubbling out, and it's lost a little bit of mass. That's the mass of the carbon dioxide, and you record that mass on the screen, and I'll show you the data later. Now, I need to know the volume of the headspace, so I tear it back to zero and just top it up with water, okay, and get the water going to the um, top of the bottle, and you can see it's increased, okay, 13.6 grams, so that's 13.60 mils of water. So that's the headspace, 13.60 mils. Okay, I need to take the temperature, so I've got to flick out a little bit. I didn't flick out enough. See, it's bubbling over. I should have tipped out more. But it doesn't matter about it, the volume now. I just want the temperature. Okay, and I'll just show you the temperature. It's, I might be able to see it there. It's less than 20. It's somewhere between 17 and 18. Okay, I'll hold it a bit closer and you can see it's not quite 18. It's a bit more than 17. So it's about 17 and a half degrees. Okay, on, I just took a, um, a photo of that separately. I'll just show you that. That's this photo here. Oops, I'll stop that. You can see it's around about 17 and a half. There's a bit of parallax error there, but you get the idea. Okay, so here's my data. <clears throat> the initial mass, if you remember from the, uh, the electronic balance, 498.41. Then I opened the top and I got a final mass of 498.29. So there's a difference of 0.12 grams. That's the carbon dioxide. So that's the mass of carbon dioxide in that headspace. Now the volume of the headspace was 13.60 mil because I needed 13.6 zero grams of water to fill it up. Now if you divide that by a thousand you get 0 0.01360 litres. Okay and the temperature you saw was 17 and a half degrees. Well <clears throat> for the gas laws um, I need that in Kelvin. So two, I've added 293 so 290, uh, 273. I've added um, 273 to it so it's 290.5 Kelvin. Okay now let's have a look at the calculations. We need the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Um, and for this, the pressure will be in kilopascals. The volume will be in litres. The number of moles or the amount of substance will be in mole, moles. And the temperature in Kelvin. And if I'm using all of those units, the gas constant R will be 8.31. You can see joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, I think if you're using the Oxford Chemistry book, they say uh, the uh, data table from QCAA, 
will be 8.314, but the data table actually just says 8.31. It's only got two decimal places, so you can use that. Now, the mass of carbon, the molar mass of carbon dioxide, I've just taken this out of the tables, out of the uh, formula booklet. Now, you don't have to be as exact as this, but it's 12.01 for carbon and two lots of 16.00 for oxygen it comes to 44.01 grams per mole. Now you could just use 44, it wouldn't matter. Um, let's calculate the number of moles because you'll need that for the ideal gas law. It's just the mass divided by molar mass. Now you might remember the mass of carbon dioxide is 0.12 divided by the molar mass of 44.01 and we get 0.00 2727 moles. Now I know there's only two decimal places there or two significant figures there. So really this should be 0 0.0027 just with the two significant figures. But <clears throat> on intermediate calculations um, we can leave as many as uh, decimal places or significant figures as we like. It doesn't really matter. It's only at the end that you need to worry. Okay, let's have a look at some sample calculations. There's the gas law again, the ideal gas law. I can rearrange that because I want to calculate the pressure. So it's nRT over V. And there's the data from before. I just brought it back again. So I'm going to substitute this data into that equation. So you can see the number of moles of gas is 0 0.002727 and so on. So here's my substitution. 0 0.002727 times R, which is the gas constant, times the temperature, 290.5 Kelvin, divided by the volume, which was 0 0.01360 litres. And if you calculate that, it comes to 484.1 kilopascals. Now, if you're taking, if that's your answer, you'd take that to two significant figures, which would be 48, uh, 480 kilopascals. Now, in an exam, you'd be told how many decimal places to record your data to. Um, no doubt it would say to the nearest whole number or something like that for this. OK, let's move on. Now, if I want to calculate uh, the pressure instead of kilopascals, I well, might want to calculate it in atmospheres. You can divide the number of kilopascals by the number of kilopascals in one atmosphere, which is 101.325, and it comes out to 4.78 atmospheres of pressure. Now, to two significant figures, that's just 4.8. Okay, so you've calculated the pressure of the headspace in two units, kilopascals and atmospheres. Now, let's apply Henry's law. Henry's law um, is a fairly straightforward uh, proportion. It just says the amount of dissolved gas in the liquid, that's the soft drink itself or the soda water, is proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid. Now we're assuming the, the only gas in the um, headspace is carbon dioxide. But if you're going to do this properly, you could subtract to get the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, you could, you could subtract the partial pressure of water vapour at that particular temperature. Now you can look that up in tables to find that, but um, it doesn't make much difference to the calculations. Okay, now Henry's law can be stated. The pressure is the partial pressure, if you like, but the pressure is equal to Henry's constant K. That's just a constant of proportionality times the concentration. Okay, so there's the value for Henry's law. Now you'll uh, Henry's constant. Now you'll see that constant in a number of different forms. I've chosen the form which applies to what we've done. We've measured things in moles and liters and atmospheres, so um, that'll be the best way. It will and now when we solve this for concentration, it'll be moles per liter. Okay, so rearranging Henry's law, we can have C equals P over the constant and substituting in. Now, if you remember from the previous page, the pressure was 4.78 atmospheres. So I'm going to work in atmospheres because the constant is in atmospheres divided by Henry's constant here. Um, and I told you that's 29.76. And that comes to 
0.161 moles per litre. Okay, now, so that's the concentration in moles per litre um, of carbon dioxide in that soda water before it was opened. Okay, now you can convert to a concentration in grams per litre if you like. So you just multiply the 0.161 moles by 44. That's the molar mass of carbon dioxide and you get 7.07 .07 grams per litre. Now, the usual way in industry to, um, to express concentration is in grams per 100 mils, which is more like a percent. So instead of being per litre, we can make it per 100 mils by just dividing that by 10 and you get 0.71%. Now we're talking about weight volume. We're assuming the volume um, was accurately measured by using the volume of water needed to top it up. And the um, weight is based on the um, 0.12 grams difference. So that was a, a weight unit. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the value of the uh, dissolved carbon dioxide in the bottle of soda water before it was opened, not afterwards, but before. Now the question is, is that right in terms of an industry standard? Now, um, Schweppes, I rang up Schweppes and they wouldn't tell me the uh, headspace pressures or anything like that. They said it's confidential. They said you'd have to do it yourself, so I did. Um, but just a point here, when you open the bottle, um, that value drops quickly. In Within maybe 10 seconds, it's down to a tenth of this value. So instead of being 0.71 in the um, soda water drink, it's down to about 0.071 because all the carbon dioxide comes out of the uh, liquid and turns back into a gas and then rises to the surface. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, um, that's just a point to note. Don't think this, um, when you open it, you'll be able to measure and check that. You can't. You have, the only way you can check that is by Henry's law, um, but it drops very quickly. Okay, that's about it. Um, if you want to see any more of these um, pracs on uh, soda water or any any of hundreds and hundreds of pracs, they're on my seniorchem.com website, eei.html. Okay, and that's it. Thank you.